for Lloyd Wright, the plantings, the landscaping, was as important as the actual architecture. Lloyd Wright helps us become more aware of the environmental world in which we live and move and relate. Wayfarer's Chapel is a memorial to Emanuel Swedenborg. He helps us gain a insight into our inner world of mind and spirit. How did we get here? A very interesting question. It goes all the way back to the 1920s when the peninsula only had a few homes. There was a gravel road coming around the peninsula. There are no freeways. To come to, way to this area was an all-day drive. Elizabeth Schellenberg thought, wouldn't this be a fantastic location for a, a little chapel where the traveling public, the wayfarer, could stop by in their journey around here, again, all day journey, for not only rest, but also a time to, uh, for meditation, prayer, give thanks to, back to God for a beautiful day. And she convinced a number of people, and there was a local committee that uh, was formed to help bring this idea to fruition. Frank and Narcissa Cox Vanderlip were also members of the Swedenborgian Church, and as you may know, they, they also owned most of the peninsula at that time. They became very enamored with the idea and said, yes, we will donate the land, and Lloyd Wright said he would be out to visit on April 15, 1947, and that he would bring with him the design for the chapel. We, we found these original blueprints, there's three of them, dated April 15, 1947, they hang down in our Wayfair Center West Conference Room. Cornerstone was dedicated in July of 1949 and the site also consecrated, etched on it. Again, the cornerstone Jesus as Lord is the uh, cornerstone of his church. Alpha and Omega is the beginning and ending, the first and last. Again, to complete this symbolism. And on Saturday, July 16th, the members and friends of Swedenborgian Church, the ministers, were gathered out there for a ceremony for the cornerstone. Cornerstone was raised in the position. The chapel then was off to a great start. However, the response to this new architecture was enormous. It blew out all expectations. Again, Lloyd Wright saw the chapel as being sacred space. The form were the trees surrounding. The trees are not sacred. The space within is sacred space. I like to call these the dimensions of spirit. There are lines drawn all on this 30-60 degree angle on the blueprints, so everything fits right in there. The glass surrounding you is quarter-inch plate glass. And Lloyd Wright wanted the class so that it would, the difference between inside and outside, inner and outer, would not be conspicuous at all. Beautiful trees, they were all planted here. Lloyd Wright's direction is five gallon saplings. Now they're reaching up 
And again, forming arbored walkways, going down the front walk, down the stairway, on this walkway out to the parking lot. Again, you are seated in a natural tree chapel. Lloyd Wright calls this a hallelujah tower. It has a sense of soaring. At night, it is floodlit. The main garden came into being. So we call it the Rose Garden. There are over 100 rose bushes in there. So here we are, beautiful view, Catalina Island, Catalina Channel, Blue Pacific Ocean. I believe we have a God-given responsibility to preserve the chapel and maintain the complex, the grounds and the gardens to the highest standards in keeping with the original architectural vision of Lloyd Wright.